get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Craig Ballantyne. He's helped over 1.5 million people with his turbulence training and home workout revolution exercise programs. He's been a fitness expert to Men's Health Magazine since 2000 and is the co-owner of the popular success newsletter, earlytorise.com where they reach hundreds of thousands of people daily with success, fitness, and self-improvement advice. Most importantly, right now, he is the author of The Perfect Day Formula, How to Own the Day and Control Your Life. Craig, thanks for being with me. Thank you very much for having me. You know, one of the most impressive things, you know, I just want to know what is the golden ticket? Oh, the golden ticket. The golden, golden ticket. Should we is... just should we should it be a surprise for people to get? What's cool about what you have is it's not just a book, but you have a whole perfect day kit, and in it there's a golden ticket. And I don't even know if we should reveal what it is, but I mean I'm really curious because I saw the unboxing on YouTube um, of people going through it. So should we reveal it? You said there's no chocolate bar involved. What what should we tell about the golden ticket and what's in this perfect day kit? Well, I mean, I can talk about everything that's in the perfect day kit, which is all the tools people need to be mm-hmm. successful and to, you know, have the perfect day. But like I said, there is no chocolate bar involved with the golden ticket. So that's a little bit of a disappointment to some people. <laughs> um, and then uh, that's all I'm going to say about the golden ticket for right now. Okay. We'll, we may bring it up later. Um, and we will talk about it. It's brilliant what you did with that. You know, it's not just a book, but it's almost like um, a Mac experience. Where you, the way you packaged it, it's an experience to open it up. And the way you package this, we'll talk about what's in it and how people can use it. But um, I always like to include a fun fact um, that most people don't know because you've written about so many articles. A fun fact that people do know that is, is kind of crazy is you get up at 4 a.m. every day. Yeah, that's my magic time. So 4 a.m. every time. So what's, what's your morning routine look like? So I get up, I, I go downstairs, and as soon as I get downstairs, uh, my dog greets me. Mm-hmm. So I actually let my dog uh, c- crawl on my chest. So I lie down on the floor, and he crawls on my chest, and I pet him for a bit because I realize, hey, you got to make time for the for the little things in life. Right. And you know, when I had him as a puppy, I would do that, and then I got so busy, you know, using air quotes, so busy, yeah, uh, that I didn't do that anymore. And I was like, this is silly. I can afford, you know, five minutes to let my dog, you know, hang out with me and just start the day nice and calm. So we do that. Then, uh, then he goes and lies down and sleeps for another, you know, seventy-five percent of his day, and I go and I have this uh, morning, you know, kind of um, cocktail of nutrients yeah. that I have. Uh, Tell to- me about it. Yeah. Uh, so it is. Um, it's athletic greens, uh-huh. which is a green drink. Yeah, and then I've extra had it. vitamin C. Yeah, and then extra vitamin C and extra glutamine, and then another immuno defense powder. Because uh, I have some digestive issues, so mm. I take that first thing in the morning, and then I sit down and I write for ninety minutes on my number one priority task, whether it's an essay for ETR, whether it's a chapter for a new book or whether it is a program for one of my fitness businesses, but I just write and write and write and write, and then some meditation, a dog walk, breakfast, more writing, and then a workout, and then that that gets me pretty much to lunch. So what would you write about today? I wrote uh, an article for my fitness business Mm -hmm. about the 10 best exercises that you can do at home Mm -hmm. to lose belly fat, and I wrote that one, and then I wrote about three diet rules that you can break, Hmm. And so I wrote a lot of fitness and nutrition stuff today. I mean, you've written so much. How do you come up with new material? Like Mostly today. interacting with customers mm-hmm. and uh, going to commercial gyms and seeing the crazy stuff that people are still doing there. You know, you think you think that everybody quit doing, you know, broomstick twists 
for their abs in the 90s, but people still do it. The only difference is now they do it standing on a BOSU ball, so it's even stupider. But, uh, <laughs> What's the but, dumbest thing you've seen someone do as far as the exercise? What? The dumbest thing you've seen, like the worst possible oh, my thing. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe that I saw somebody do this, and they were doing this with a trainer. So a trainer was telling them to do this. They had two dumbbells yeah. stood on end, so on the flat ends, and they were standing on the dumbbells in a lunge position. And, not done yet, <laughs> not done yet, they had uh, boxing mitts on, and the trainer was standing behind them, and they were doing, like, reverse punches into the boxing mitts. And this, this, believe it or not, someone is paying this trainer, because it's downtown Toronto, they're paying that trainer over $100 an hour to do that. Wow. So dangerous, so stupid, so ridiculous, and yet, you know, it's like, I always describe it as the emperor has no clothes. Like, mm -hmm. most people don't realize that, you know, they, they've been told that they're walking around with this beautiful robe on, like in that uh, fa fable, <laughs> but they have no idea that what they're doing is absolutely useless and dangerous and looks so ridiculous, but they because they're paying $150 an hour for training in Toronto... They think that uh, they're doing the right thing. So it's, man, I've seen some crazy stuff in gyms, and but that outweighs everything. <laughs> you think the trainers got bored and he's like, let's see what we can do today. I think it's partially that, um, partially that, the tra you know, some trainers are just coasting by on personality, you know, you know, cult of personality. They actually don't have an education in training. But, um, you know, they know somebody who knows somebody who got them a CEO. And the next thing you know, the CEO has referred them all this business and he's the hot trainer and you go to the hot trainer because all your friends go to it. And, you know, it's it's kind of like the way Bernie Madoff worked. Right. Right. So what got you interested in fitness? Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach in the NHL. Really? So I knew I... I knew that I couldn't make the NHL as a, as a small kid. Um, you know, it just this just wasn't going to work for me. Right. Um, but so I figured, okay, well, what's another way that I can get involved in pro sports? And it, it was around you know ninety four, ninety five mm -hmm. when strength and conditioning was starting to become popular, and I yeah. realized that was an avenue. And you know, I started with traditional bodybuilding first, and then got into that. Did a kinesiology degree, did a master's of exercise physiology degree. And then just as I was about to really go hardcore into that market, um, I started writing for Men's Health in 2000 and I mm -hmm. realized, hey, this is actually a lot of fun helping you know, the average guy who's really busy. And so then I just started working in that marketplace and you know, writing for the magazine all the time. And I'm a bit of a, a bookworm and a nerd, so it was really easy for me just to you know, sit on my computer, write articles, and then go train people who had I had a lot in common with, and I just built my internet business um, based on that. While at the same time training people for several years uh, to to supplement the internet income until it became a full time job. Mm -hmm. So early on, when you were a kid growing up, is that you, you thought I want to be in the NHL? Like, wait, I'm too small. And I want to be a fitness trainer or still back then when you were growing up, did you still have those dreams of being in the NHL? Oh, I gave those up like when I was 10. I, okay. I was not playing in the NHL. Um, you know, I grew up in a town where ho it's just hockey crazy. And right. you know, to be, if you're a good player in my town, you're still, I mean, you would be a good player outside of my town, but you would be like on the low end in my town because there were so many people playing there. So uh, I, I realized that pretty quickly. I just knew I wanted to do something in the fitness world. I thought maybe if I was a physiotherapist, I could be in the NHL. And then I realized even better, you could actually just train guys. And I, I'm friends with a lot of guys who do that for a living, but I never did that for a living myself. You grew up in Toronto? Near Toronto. Near Toronto. Actually, I grew up in the same town as Canada's number one hero, Justin Bieber. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Wayne Gretzky. Like Justin Bieber. No. Oh, I, I said that a little, uh, little sarcastically. Yeah, I know. I'm I kidding. Sure I think he's a good kid, but uh, I, I did grow up in the same town, town as him. Um, his parents are the same age as me, and I've seen him down at the YMCA some some mornings uh, playing <laughs> basketball and working out in the gym. That's hilarious. Um, yeah. And also, you know, from a young age, I always am interested in what influenced you. And from your book, um, it seemed like your father had a huge, huge influence on you early on. Oh, absolutely. Uh, both good and bad. Yeah. I mean, both my parents were incredibly hard workers. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, I learned a lot what not to do from my father. You know, he drank too much. He wasted his talents. Um, but again, he was a hard worker, and so I did learn that from him. And, what did and, he do? Uh, he was a farmer, actually. I grew up on oh, a farm. Oh, really? Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so he was up early. Um, we didn't have dairy cattle, so he wasn't up early to milk them. We had what are called beef cattle, so you know what you eat your hamburgers from. Right. And so it was it was a little easier than having dairy cattle because you don't have to get up at five in the morning to I milk see. them. You just you just have to get up around six thirty in the morning to feed them. Um, still but, early, you know. Yeah. Was, yeah, still early, and uh, I mean hard, hard, hard work. You know, he was. Uh, his fingers were cracked from the cold in the winter time, yeah. and his uh, his arms were tanned dark, dark brown in the summertime from the sun. Mm -hmm. So you know it was like no excuses. You're going to get things done. Yeah. Um, he was very unconventional in what he did and in the ways that he did it. Um, but again, he 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 did waste. I mean, he's a smart guy, and he wasted some of his talents. Um, what was unconventional? Know, because, uh, alcohol was alcohol abuse so he and, he and he passed away a little, little bit mm. earlier than he should have so, yeah i'm uh, so sorry to hear that that was yeah it's okay we actually you know because of my online business i was able to spend so much time with him in the in his final 18 months you know we just drove around because uh, he always liked to just drive around and see how tall the corn was yeah. you know an hour away you know that's what farmers did <laughs> and uh, uh, check out old equipment so we had very good times, and I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't yeah. for all the uh, work that I had done to build up my, you know, my lifestyle-based yeah. business. Yeah, Craig, what did he do that was unconventional? He would buy. Um, so he would go to like companies that produce, uh, you know, peas and corn in a can, mm -hmm. and he would buy like their the stuff that they didn't use. And he would feed that to the cows, so he wouldn't have to buy like corn from, mm. uh, you know, from companies to feed the cattle. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, people made fun of him and stuff for that, but he did that because I don't know. I guess it saved him some money, and he thought he was smart. And but <laughs> he just did a lot of it's uh, the same stuff. stuff, anyways. Yeah. What did you do around the farm? Uh, I picked a lot of rocks. I picked a lot of weeds. <laughs> yeah. um, I, uh, you know, stacked a lot of bales of hay, both with the tractor and, and by hand, and um, helped him with man cleaning the manure out of the barn. That was, uh, that was the something worst, was that, that we always had to job? do. And I helped deliver a couple of uh, calves a couple times. And Oh, and, really? Uh, Holy cow. Yeah, in some unconventional ways. Because, you know, like if you have a breech birth in a hospital with um, a, a child, you obviously have to be very careful and so sometimes you have that with a calf and they have uh you know four legs and it can be a real awkward thing you have so, to cut it open you know. i mean did your dad have to cut no, open? you oh. have to you have to pull pretty hard to get them out though oh my god so you basically were were partially responsible for pulling out the calf yeah yeah a couple times i helped them with that oh my god so do you think this is where you get a lot of your discipline and hard work from uh, yeah, from him and from my mother as well. Again, she was a very hard worker. She worked a, a regular day job at a, at a factory as a receptionist and then came home and, um, you know, we were uh, not rich by any means. We were very lower middle class. Not poor. I wouldn't say poor, but, you know, we I used uh, secondhand hockey equipment and hand-me-down clothing and stuff like that. But she would come home and she would sew every evening. In the summertime, she spent hours in her garden. I mean, we she had a heck of a garden and... You know, freezing and canning uh, wow. all the the fruits and and vegetables, and you know she still does that. She still gardens to this day, and you know does a lot of stuff that uh, frugal German farm wives would do. Right. So, wow. yeah. So uh, you know, so I learned a lot from them, and you know they they expected me to kind of do a lot of stuff on my own. Uh, you know, I was joking about it the other day with with a friend uh, who was missing one of her son's basketball games and mm -hmm. how guilty she was feeling. Yeah, and I said, you know, my parents made me ride three miles on, you know, this crappy little bicycle in the summertime just to go play baseball because they wouldn't give me a ride. <laughs> and, I, and I mean, it wasn't like I was riding through the streets of a city. I was riding through the countryside right. in the dark. Like I could have been picked up and. You know, abducted by people but they were just right. like you know if you want to play baseball you're going to get your butt to baseball on your own right and so it's kind of funny that now everybody has to be at every kid's practice you know filming it and involved in some way and it just you know it just wasn't like that in it's, 1984. it's interesting yeah and, and not only that is they probably if it were today they 
first of all, would never allow, allow that. They'd have a make sure the kid had a helmet and a car seat and like whatever, like a bike seat right. or something. And like, well, my parents would be arrested for, for what they <laughs> for, you know, you know, for letting me bike on my own under the age of ten to baseball. Right. So, right. Absolutely. Um, and it yeah. actually brings up a, a you know your comment about the seatbelt um, yeah. brings up something that. When I was four years old, something that something happened in a car ride uh, that actually influenced me to mm. go into the health and fitness industry yeah. as well. So we were actually coming home from town, me and my mother, and I was riding in this big green car, and that was back in the days when there was no seatbelts. No seatbelts. Seat yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you would have to like dig into the, the seat, right, to find the seatbelt. Right, yes. You could never find it. And I was sitting in the front seat, and I was four years old, and you're not allowed to do that anymore. Right. Uh, but... But I could tell that she was upset by something, and so I asked her, and she said, uh, you know, I just got out of my Weight Watchers meeting, and I didn't lose any weight, and so mm. she was really sad, and so that really impacted me, and that's why I think I went on to do all these transformation contests in my business, Yeah, because we've done 25 of them now. Um, a gentleman just lost 75 pounds that's in 12 amazing. weeks in them. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I mean, there's some people you... Some people get accused of not being the same person because of the changes they make. And, and you see this all the time in, in beach body commercials and stuff like that. Yeah. It's really amazing what somebody can do in in 12 weeks, which is uh, – yeah. and I calculated this out one time – 0.03% of your life. Yeah, That's all it is. And it's amazing what people can change not only in their health and fitness but also in their business in their personal lives and that sort of thing. So uh, that impacted me, and that was a no seatbelt uh, story that I just wanted to share. <laughs> so this is with turbulence training, right? What made you – Where first of all, where can people check that out? Because I was looking. The pictures, before and after pictures on there are astounding. You they know? are unbelievable. They're astounding. They really are at, yeah. at, at turbulencetraining.com. And, yeah. and again, we've ran 25 transformation contests, but in 25 contests, we also have four categories – men and women over and under 40 so mm -hmm. you know we're going on a hundred plus winners of these category of these um, contests and yeah. you know we've gave out over hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash wow. maybe even two thousand dollars in cash now in prizes uh, to people wow. from all around the world which is really cool that's like, amazing I haven't met most of them. um they're from all corners of the globe um and then one thing that i learned about learned and talked about in my book is yeah. that all the winners always have these five pillars in place yes and those five pillars of success if they don't have them they're not winning period yeah the five pillars of transformation and i want you to talk about those for a second but first of all how does the transformation contest work what do people need to do sorry i missed that one. Oh, i said how does the transformation contest work what do people have to do Oh, yeah, great question. So we do them three times a year, and all people have to do, I mean, they don't have to pay to enter or anything. They don't have to buy anything from me. They do have to use one of my workouts, but I have tons of workouts on YouTube and on our blog. So someone could just, you know, go and enter during the, it's January, May, and September are the start dates, mm -hmm. and they're 12 weeks long, and you just have to take a before and after photo and, you know, go and use my workouts for 12 weeks do amazing things, you know, change your body, and then write a little 300-word essay on mm. your journey yeah. at the end and submit your photos in that little essay, and you can win up to, uh, I think it's $1,000 and a three-month membership to my, or three-year membership to my um, website. And we're actually, for the 25th contest that we're, that's just ending yeah. right now, we're actually picking a grand prize and flying them to our annual summit which wow. is in Denver in June. So really excited about that. That's to, awesome. To meet one of our winners. And a lot of our a lot of our winners actually go on to become certified in my turbulence training system. So we mm. have a certification as well. And it's really awesome to see somebody go from, you know, overweight and struggling to winning a contest to then becoming a part time trainer and sometimes yeah. even going on to open up their own gym and facility and become a yeah. successful six figure trainer yeah. just because they changed their life. It's really cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, you have an amazing program, and obviously, you guys um, do an amazing job displaying that on the site because I have no interest in doing any type of training. By the time I was reading through it, I'm like, I think I should do the turbulence training. <laughs> you know, like you see, you <laughs> these people are like, Go from way overweight to having these six pack abs. I'm like, why am I? Why don't I have that? That's that's yeah. horrible. Yeah, uh, and the great thing is, is we show people how to do it in a very short order. Yeah. So 
I, you know, just before this call, I was on a call with my editor. Um, we're releasing a new book in January about the cardio myth. Mm. And we were just talking about how this is going to appeal so much to people that, you know, nobody wants, no, there's very, very few, maybe 5% of the people want to get up and, you know, go and exercise for an hour first thing in the morning. You know, oh, yeah. there's some type A people that want to do it. Right. Most people don't want to do it. And they've been told this all their lives and it's not working. And now we're going to come along and say, hey, listen, here's the research that shows you don't have to do this. Yeah. And all you need to do is like four to ten minutes every day with some bodyweight exercises yeah. and you'll actually get better results. So um, we're very fortunate that that long, slow method of exercising doesn't work. Yeah. And we're going to show people a better way. Yeah. What's been mo one of the most memorable transformation winners for turbulence training? Definitely the the most uh, memorable woman is a woman named Catherine Gordon. She had a horrible, horrible story to start. I mean, um, she went to a, a grocery store with her son, and the guy at the checkout asked if she was, you know, she wanted the senior's discount, mm. uh, you know, with her grandson, and she's 45 years old. So mm. that was really horrible, and that inspired her to go and change. And then, so she won my second contest yeah. and then she's gone on to do exactly what I said. She got certified. She became my trainer of the year in 2014 and she owns a, a training studio in Sonora, California oh, that's awesome. and she's back into acting and all this stuff just from, you know, getting her confidence back yeah. from exercise and health and nutrition. And now she's changing lives and, yeah. you know, it's like throwing a stone in, in a lake. It's rippled. Your business, my business, same yeah. thing. You know, someone's going to listen to this. They're going to go out and do good things. And that is just a wonderful, wonderful life when your business allows you to have that ripple effect on so many others. Yeah, that's huge. And, you know, one of the, the best things about the Perfect Day formula is it comes out of you seeing all these trends um, of helping millions of people. And like you talked about, the five pillars of transformation – can you talk a little bit about those? What it, what were the trends yeah. that you were seeing? Yeah, they, they're really helpful, and they don't just change your body; they change uh, so much. You can change, you know, your financial situation. You can find the love of your life. You can do anything you want with yeah. these five pillars. And so they go like this: first of all, it's better planning and preparation. Mm -hmm. And most people will set a goal. They'll say, you know, I'm here, but that's not a plan at all. You know, you have to plan out your nutrition. You have to plan out your exercise, you have to plan out your, your sleep. And when you do that, then you have a much better chance of success. So if yeah. you plan out, here's my budget, here's how I'm going to get out of debt, here's yeah. how I'm going to change my credit cards to, you know, way less interest, then you're rocking and rolling. Yeah. Um, so that's the first pillar. The second pillar is professional accountability. And research shows that being accountable to a professional so somebody who you either hire or who is a mentor to you but has expertise that they can give you is more effective than being accountable just to a friend. Mm -hmm. So the accountability coach will give you expert advice and will hold you accountable and take no excuses um, when you uh, mess up. Yeah. And that's different. that's different than the third pillar, which is social support. Mm -hmm. Social support are the people who will give you um, – you know, a pump up every day, no matter how day, bad the day went. So if you had a tough day, they'll say, hey, you know what? No worries. Come back tomorrow. You're going to do it. I'm proud of you. That, that type of thing. Yeah. But they're not actually going to have the expert advice and they're not going to be able yeah. – well, they probably won't say, you know what? That's a lame excuse. I don't I don't ever want to hear that again. Right. That's what your accountability coach is for. I gotcha. So there's a difference between your coach and your cheerleaders, yeah. but you need them both. Who is yours? And Who's your social support? Definitely the uh, the trainers that I have yeah. that are certified with me. Um, I also join every single one of my transformation contests, mm. so I don't oh, necessarily really? do something. Physical. Yeah, I don't do something physical every time. Sometimes I make uh, changes to my nutrition, like uh, you know, one of my bad habits last year was Coke Zeros. I would drink like two or three. A I would week, never have guessed that. Day, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I, I have a sweet tooth, and uh, Coke Zero is <laughs> is pretty darn close to Coke. Um, so. So I, you know, I gave that up uh, mm. with their help, and I, gotcha. I actually gave up uh, drinking water out of plastic bottles uh, mm. over six or eight months ago with their help. So, That's awesome. So each of the transformations, yeah, so, you almost try and break a, a habit that you want to break. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. So what I'll are some of the other there. ones? So you had Coke Zero, drinking water out of plastic bottles. What other ones did you 
uh, um, work some, on? Some of them were, were just writing a thousand words every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was that one. Uh, so I'll basically alternate between like a personal development transformation mm -hmm. and a nutrition or physical change. Yeah. Uh, I've done like some body weight challenges and some, um, and I've done, uh, you know, this one right now is about being more generous than ever. So giving as much as I can. So mm. that's my, you know, that that's coming to an end right now. I, and I'll have to pick something for, um, uh, in a couple of months when we start our next one. So yeah, I'm always trying to do something. And so those, those people that, again, I've never met most of them, but they're on my membership site and they're my social support. Yeah. So I use them. Um, I also get social support from my employees. I get social support from yeah. my friends. Anybody who's positive and is not going to uh, ridicule you right. should be your positive, should be your social support. Yeah. You, do, you don't want to share your goals with those people that are negative. Yeah, yeah. So social support's number three. What's number four? Meaningful incentive. Okay. And that is really important that it's a meaningful incentive because it's one thing for us to say, oh, you know, if I lose 10 pounds, I'll buy myself a new pair of jeans. That's nice. That'll get you going for two weeks. But that isn't going to keep you going for six weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks until you accomplish what you really want to accomplish right. in your life. So you have to think, okay, why am I really doing this? Why, why, why? Yeah. And it could be, you know, for your, you know, to look sexy again for your spouse. It could be to have more energy for your kids. It could be because you're on the verge of death. You know, it could be because your cholesterol and, and blood pressure are through the roof and you have to change now yeah. or else there will never be another shot. So it needs to be a meaningful incentive. And I learned this uh, the hard way because one of my uh, transformations back in 2013 was I said, oh, I'm going to learn how to play chess mm. because that's what apparently smart people do. <laughs> and I be smart. So after mm. three days of trying to watch chess videos on YouTube and play some online games, I quit. And right. I realized this is not meaningful to me in any way. I had no connection to it. I didn't really care. Right. But what I knew that I should take up was meditation. I had tried and failed a couple times before. Right. I'd struggled with anxiety in the past, and I knew that meditation would help me. Yeah. And so on January 28th, 2013, I started with two minutes of meditation mm -hmm. in, uh, in the Viceroy Hotel, I think, in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, a very famous hotel there. Okay. And I haven't missed a day since of at least five minutes of meditation. Right. Um, some days uh, it's on a busy travel day. I'm doing it during the plane's takeoff, which is a really, really great way to either meditate or fall asleep. Right. Well, especially if you're and, nervous uh, about planes flying. Yeah. Like... But, uh, but I average about 20 minutes a day. Wow. Yeah. So I just sit on, uh, you know, some pillows and sit cross-legged and close my eyes and I, I don't worry too much about my thoughts wandering. Um, I did. I did worry about that a lot at the start, but I realized that kind of made it, you know, not very much fun yeah. and difficult. And so it, I just said, okay, I'm not going to worry about that for now. So I breathe deeply and slowly. That has been the biggest thing for me. I have become more patient. And in so general, been, you mean? You know, just, what's that? Like in general, or? Oh yeah, yeah. in general. So. I mean, I would race old ladies to the checkout line at the grocery <laughs> store, uh, you know, 10 years ago just because I wouldn't want to wait behind them, you know. And now I'm like, okay, be polite, be courteous, relax. You know, you're going to get home at 1244 instead of 1243. Just it's okay, you know, <laughs> just just to take it easy. So it really has helped me in, in my patience, um, especially mm -hmm. dealing with uh, team members and employees. I've become a much more tolerable uh, team member. And so that, I mean, it's made a world of difference in my life. And, and I, it's something I struggled with. Um, I quit in the two prior attempts that I made to meditate. Yeah. And what this changed? one, I just said. What changed from you quitting mindset. to actually you sticking through with it? Mindset. Me going, uh, come heck or high water, I'm making this a habit. You, you know, just I'm committed. Not, yeah. And I also got, uh, you know, my business partner had been meditating for years and years. Yeah. So I got. Basically, I called him my professional accountability. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, I'm struggling with this. What do you recommend me yeah. do? And, oh, you know, just focus on your breathing. Yeah. Focus on, you know, this tip and that tip. So he gave yeah. me extra advice. And also from my chiropractor who yeah. um, was really into it. So there were those two things. And then I think I had a bit of a, 
it wasn't like I didn't know I had anxiety in the past when I tried before, but this time I just wanted to, you know, shut it out from my life for good. And yeah. I had been doing a really great job and I just wanted to add it. And then also, uh, we had been writing about it a lot at early to rise, you yeah. know, we were recommending meditation to all of our readers. And I'm right. like, well, I don't meditate. So <laughs> I feel like a hypocrite. Right. So there's been a couple of things that I've changed in my life yeah. uh, because of early to rise, realizing that, you know, I have these bad habits, but I go and ten- tell people what to do all day. So right. I need to change my own. So I right. actually stopped swearing as well. It's good motivation. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, I you know, I was out running intervals and I thought, I, I, you know, I swear all the time around my friends. But, you know, I tell people to, you know, do this and this at early to rise. So I quit swearing in six days with hmm. the five pillars. Wow. Yeah, so basically you yeah. just practice what you preach. You use the five pillars. With, you plug in whatever you want to do, and you kind of use this this step-by-step. Step. Um, and yeah. the, so the fifth, what's the fifth pillar? The fifth one is the biggest and most important pillar. It has the greatest impact when you have them all in place, and it's the deadline. And everyone mm-hmm. knows that a deadline is very, yeah. very powerful. It gets us to take action. Uh, a couple of examples of it in place, you know, Christmas Day is a great deadline because what's the busiest shopping day of the right. year? Well, well, Black Friday, I suppose, but, um, you know, that's because there's a sale deadline, but also the right. 23rd, 24th of December are packed at the malls. But it's not like nobody knows that Christmas is the 25th. It's not like uh, Easter, which is a sneaky holiday and, you know, jumps around on the calendar. Right. But everybody knows that December 25th is going to be Christmas again this year. Right. But Human nature, we just wait till the final seconds until we actually have to go yeah. and you know be inspired by the deadline. I mean, you can't go and buy something on the 26th and really impress somebody as a Christmas gift. I mean, they want it the day before. So the uh, the deadline will inspire people to action. It will yeah. also motivate them to stay with uh, a habit change. So you know, the first two weeks, most people can skate by on motivation. From two to six weeks, it's, it, it becomes tougher and tougher. Yeah. But then it's at the sixth week of our 12-week transformation contest, people go, okay, I'm halfway through. Now I'm on the home stretch. And then it's just like running a marathon. As you hit mile 25, you find energy that you didn't think that you mm. would ever have again right. and run a little bit faster. And so that's the power of the deadline. Um, and we see it in marketing all the time that people wait, wait and wait and wait. Always. Sales almost over. And I mean, I've ran promotions over 100 times. And I'm still amazed by the fact that you'll get 25 to 30 percent of your orders in the final six hours wow. of a sale. That's amazing. Yeah, it's so true. And I love how you you mean you use that with the transformation to get results for people because you are setting a real uh, a deadline essentially with the transformation contest. Yeah, and, and both ways. So it's like, listen, you have to get your results by by this date, but also, hey, listen, you only have to you know focus for this long. Right. And, I did the math, and 12 weeks is 0.03% of somebody's 75-year lifespan. Right. And right. if you say to somebody, listen, can you give me 0.03% of your life to yeah. change? Most people would be like, yeah, I can give you that much because yeah. it sounds like so little. What, you know, Craig, what do you think the hardest one out of these five pillars are for people? What do you, or what do you get either, most pushback? Either social support or yeah. professional accountability. So professional accountability, most people say, I, I don't have money. I don't know where this coach is. And yeah. the answer to that is go to the library. Get their free books. Right. Go to YouTube, watch their videos, and have them as a virtual mentor first. And then, yeah. um, you know, if you're in a business transformation, you take the money that you earn from their from reading their book, and you go and buy their course. And you take the right. money you earn from buying their course, and you go to their seminar. And you take the money you yeah. earn from buying, you know, going to their seminar and join their coaching. Um, otherwise, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, I mean, there's so much free information yeah. there. That you kind of cobble, have to cobble it together, but you can yeah. still get what you need. You just keep leveling up and leveling up yeah. and leveling up, and uh, and even from your. But, from but the, the other thing yeah, is, most people, sorry, mo- most people just struggle with positive social support because they're surrounded by so many negative people at home and at work. Yeah, and so we just have to go and find them new social support. And the great thing is, research shows that online social support just as powerful as real world. So, you yeah. know, finding a Facebook group, finding a membership site, you know, finding some type of online support will help you even if you feel like you're surrounded by nothing but negative people. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned that is a big one, you know, that holds people back because I think they have to spend a ton of money. And I remember what's interesting um, story you tell in the Perfect Day Formula is your struggle with it early on with 
that you always say, I should have got my mentor earlier. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so talk about absolutely. that, your, your decision-making process to find that initial mentor. Right, so the, the biggest mistake that I made was I didn't hire a coach soon enough. I mean, yeah. I could have hired a coach you know, financially in 2003, but I waited until 2006 because, you know, frankly, I was cheap, stupid, and stubborn, and right. I was just, you know, I thought I could do it all my, on my own. Um, it, it was just... It was really nice timing. It was a classic uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear right, moment. Right. Uh, I was just reaching out to a friend, and we got in a conversation about coaching, and, and he said, I'm, I'm actually thinking about taking coaching clients on. And I said, I would love to you know, mm. have you coach me. And he was, he was really, really great. And he helped me have a huge breakthrough in my business, and mm -hmm. I wish I would have done it sooner. Um, so that was the biggest mistake that I made. So the biggest piece of advice I could ever give to somebody yeah. is get a coach sooner. So find somebody that you want to emulate yeah. in terms of both success uh, financially, but also success morally and ethically. And find somebody that, that suits you and your personality and hire them. Do everything you possibly can, even if it's just going to their seminar. Be their intern, whatever it is. But uh, go and find your mentor as yeah. soon as you can. And then, Craig, this was Tom you're referring to? Yeah, Tom yeah. Venuto, who wrote Burn the Fat, Feed the Muscle, a very big selling ebook. And he, he's like kind of the, the grandfather of fitness yeah. um, information products on the internet. He's been around and doing this since 2001 or 2002. Yeah. And he's just a wise, ethical, moral person. And he really helped me out. So, what was the breakthrough he helped you with? You um, he really showed me how to create a website that other people would recommend to others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, specifically affiliates. He showed me how to write a good, compelling sales copy. He showed me how to be persuasive. He showed me how to organize things. And he showed me uh, basically how to do a, like a three day promotion with a deadline in it. And so that was, uh, you know, one of my first mm. experiences um, with a promotional deadline. And so he just really dialed everything in for me because I was kind of like scratching and clawing and putting stuff together on my own and it right. just wasn't coming together. And then in, you know, in three months working with me, it, it made a huge difference. You know, it was like the exponential hockey stick results. Yeah. yeah. Spending a little bit of, it's amazing how we try and save so much money, but spending more money sometimes just saves us uh, time and makes us more money. Yeah, I just did a recent presentation at a at a big fitness seminar yeah. talking about the three biggest business mistakes that I made. Yeah. And the the first two were about wasting money. Yeah. And I said, but you know what? The the money that you waste is like a fraction of what you will lose by not having a coach, which was, you know, the third the third mistake. Like yeah. people are gonna overpay on rent, they're gonna overpay on websites, right. and, you know, they're gonna get in partnership with the wrong person. Everyone's gonna do this. It's like you right. can't I could tell you a million times right. and you'll still go and make those mistakes. Right. But the wrong partner and, and overpaying, they'll only cost you ten thousand dollars in, in errors. But right. not having a coach could cost you millions. Yeah. Or having a coach can help you avoid the other two, maybe. <laughs> um Yeah, absolutely. So a big influence on you obviously is early to rise. Um what it's a huge site. Amazing work you guys do. What led up to being the owner of Early to Rise? So that's a long, long story, and it starts with uh, my coach, Tom. So in 2006, on our first call, he said to me, you know, Craig, what do you want your business to look like in 2000, or, sorry, in five years from now? Yeah. And I said, I'd love to have a business like Early to Rise. Mm. And that was it. That was, you know, we went on and talked about sales copy after that. But Why that Early to Rise? Why did you want a site like Early to Rise? I had been a reader of that site for about five years. I mean, Mark Ford, uh, a.k.a. Michael Masterson, yeah. started that in 2000 or 2001. Yeah. I was on the email list early. And, you know, he was talking not only about health, but also building your business and, you know, becoming a smarter person and a better person. Yeah. And really, it's a holistic approach to just success. Yeah. And I just thought this is the most wonderful thing because not only did I want to help people change their bodies, but I really wanted to help people. With, with shortcuts, you know, science proven shortcuts to success in every aspect of life. Because I think life in general is simple. We just make it too hard on ourselves because we don't know the answers. And so I wanted to share my answers and experience with people. And so that's, you know, that's why I was so big on it at the time. And I said that to Tom. 
Um, but then, you know, we didn't really, we didn't ever talk about it again. And then the year after that, I joined Yannick Silver's mastermind group in 2007. Right. In 2008, I met my business partner, Matt Smith. Uh, but we didn't do any business together until 2011. Mm. Um, but we remained friends and I learned a lot from him. And, you know, I met a lot of people. And then in 2010, Matt Smith and I were on a trip with Yannick and Tim Ferriss in the deserts of Arizona. We were shooting guns and driving cars. Okay. And then on the way back, we were at the airport and Matt said to me, you know, what uh, What do you think you're going to do next after the fitness business? Or, you know, what are you going to do in the fitness business? And I said, well, I'd you know, I, I told him that I wanted to have a business like Early to Rise. Mm. And then six months later, he was at a seminar with Mark Ford. Mm. And Mark Ford said to him, I don't think I want to do early to rise anymore. I'm going to sell it or I'm, you know, I might even shut it down. And he said, well, I know a guy who would love to take it over. And mm. so he connected with me with Mark and Matt and I flew down to Florida and negotiated uh, the acquisition of the company. Wow. And we've been running it uh, since July of 2011. And that was five years, three months and 17 days after I first told Tom on that uh, first call that I wanted to have a business like early to rise in five years. So yeah. I got my exact business dream uh, accomplished. I was a little late, so don't hold it against me that I was <laughs> 17 days late, but right. I did a pretty good job. And so to me, that was my first experience with, you know, kind of like the law of attraction, but I actually call it the law of action attraction because right. you have to go out there and, do the work. You yeah. have to meet people, and but when you do that stuff and you implement those five pillars into your life, you can achieve exactly what you want in your dreams. It was really, really an amazing moment for me. Yeah, Craig, that's amazing. What's the most rewarding? I want. I'm interested in what's the most rewarding thing about running early to rise, and what's the most challenging? What's the most rewarding? Definitely first, most rewarding. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? No, Last yeah. Part? What was the most rewarding? Yeah. It's just the customer feedback from people that we get uh, from, again, from all over the world that we'll, that we'll probably never meet, um, that we've changed their life in this way, that, you know, this email helped them get out of, like, the darkest time of their life. Uh, you know, we've had a couple people say that, uh, you know, they, they were so down and out they were considering suicide. I mean, not a lot of people. Oh. I don't want to say that we're, you know. Right. stopping people from committing suicide but you know we've reached people in a, in a tough place before and then also the transformations um i always say that you can't have a physical transformation without a mental transformation as impressive as the physical transformations are the before and afters i mean i get teary-eyed when i read some of these things about mm. single moms and 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 you know the physical transformation they've made but then what their children think of them and how really you know it's really made a big impact on them um, and just, you know, repairing relationships with their spouses because they're back in shape and taking care of themselves. Wow. So that is easily the most important yeah. thing. And now the, the perfect day formula, we're hearing from people strengthening marriages just with that vision exercise. Really? And, you know, having more time for their kids to read with them and, and not be addicted to their phones and, you know, actually sitting down for dinner. And it's really, really wonderful. So that is by far the most rewarding part of the business. And, uh, second most rewarding though is the team that we've built and our office is in Denver and I just love the people there like fan and really, really great. Uh, and one other thing that we actually do at Early to Rise every December we do this Toys for Tots charity drive yeah. uh, with Marines. So, I've heard about that. Yeah, the Marines do this in cities all over America and believe it or not, actually I'll let you guess, how many kids do you think they have to buy toys for in Den in the Denver area so that a kid doesn't wake up on Christmas without a toy. Yeah. I mean, I've listened to podcasts where you, you talked about this, so um it's um it's it's astounding. I mean it's in the I think you said it was like over hundreds of thousands or something, right? It was not it's ninety four thousand people in a metro That's area crazy. of three million people, wow. which is mind boggling. I couldn't believe it. That's but, amazing. And and they're almost they're almost always 10, 20, 30,000 toys short. So we get a whole bunch of our friends together and we go to Walmarts and we spend as much money as we can. And last year we bought $151,000 worth of toys, wow. which is 7,500 toys. So we made a little bit of a dent wow. in it. Oh my gosh. But still, yeah, still, that's just so many kids, you know. And that's and so what, what I heard on the, someone else was mentioning that you, yeah, spent $150,000 on toys to make sure the yeah, kids had toys. Yeah. 
So what happens is, is we buy these toys, you know, we, we go through hundreds of shopping carts of toys with all the people. We usually have like 65 people there. And then we fill up these marine trucks, and the marines take mm. it to a distribution center. Wow. And then the distribution centers take it to community centers. And then the community center will have like a Santa Claus come in, and the parents and the kids, I think, and they'll get the toy. So that's how it works. Wow. And so anybody listening, if you have this in your town, please, by all means, you know, 10 bucks at Walmart can get a kid a toy. Um, you can, you know, take 50 bucks down there with your kids and it changes the kids lives. And what I mean by the kids, I'm talking about the, the kids of the people that join us in the shopping. So my business partner has two kids and you know, they're, they don't want for anything because you know, my business partner is a successful guy. He doesn't buy them everything, but uh, of course, but they don't need anything. And right. then you go and you take them on this thing and you tell them, Hey, yeah. we're buying toys for kids that wouldn't have any toys. Yeah. It really changes their perspective on things. And it's really yeah. been a wonderful learning experience for the, for the kids. So what's it called? Craig, what's join their parents on this shopping spree. That's so amazing. That's, that's a great a idea. Thing. That's a great idea. What's the charity? What is it called? The charity? It's called toys for tots toys and it's run okay. by the United States Marine Corps. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, and it's, fantastic. it's in cities all over America. I know they even do it in Toronto, obviously not within the United States Marine Corps. They do it with the firefighters and the police mm, department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have it in Chicago, yeah. You know, we're doing, I don't know if you've heard of the book, there's a book called Opposite of Spoiled, and it basically helps teach like really young kids financial literacy, so you start young, and part oh, of it cool. is giving them an allowance of, in you know, a give, spend, uh, and save jar, and so I should definitely, you know, my little daughter is thinking of, what should I do with the, the give, and that's actually an amazing idea to, to use for the give jar. So thank you. Around kids and their energy and all that sort of stuff. So that's been, uh, you know, the rewarding part. The challenging part is just, I mean, I guess it would be, uh, it's all personal for me. It's just becoming a better mentor and manager mm -hmm. and um, overcoming my selfishness where I just want to, you know, write in a room all day, but I need <laughs> to be out there and, and teaching and, and helping our employees grow. And, and I've learned a lot in the last uh, year. And, and I really think that we've put together this amazing team of people and they're just very, very sharp and they, they're passionate about helping people. And so that uh, challenge has turned into a reward. So challenge is be just becoming a better manager over time. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm an introverted guy, and again, uh, you know, my talent is writing. So it's tempting for me just to shut the door and you know just write articles all day. Yeah. But you're never going to reach as many people as you would like to if you don't build the people around you to help get that message yeah. out. Yeah, that's a great point, Craig. So what did you do um, to have a breakthrough as a manager? Um, it's mostly accountability to the to my business partner Matt and yeah. to um, one of our other business partners Jeff Schneider, who's a yeah. really really great guy. And you know they just wouldn't tolerate me when yeah. I would, you know, be curt with somebody or not, you know, teach somebody something that they need to to learn. And so they showed me how to, you know, teach better, and they showed me how to do proper interviews to hire the right person, and they. Yeah taught me how to uh, give better feedback to somebody when a mistake was made. Yeah. And they really just transformed my interpersonal skills. So, yeah. you know, if that weren't great to, to uh, much better. Um, I mean, I'm certainly no manager of the year, but uh, I'm getting there. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's been, hasn't been easy and it's been embarrassing at times because I realize how poorly I behaved. But it just shows you that uh, you can change if you set your mind to it and you use those five pillars. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Every time I ask that question, I think, um, go back to, you know, I listen to the book. It's like you can just plug it into the five pillars, right? So yeah. someone's having a challenge being a manager or whatever that challenge is, they could just do the planning and prep, get professional accountability, someone who's done it, the social support, the meaningful incentive and the deadline, and you're, yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, I love that. So, um so the perfect day formula, how did you come up with the name? I know you're well thought out. You're a, a master writer, copywriter. Tell me about the formation of the perfect day formula title. I think it was just uh, going back and forth with, uh, again, my business partner, Matt Smith on, and it was like, well, what, you know, what am I trying to convey here? Because the whole book from start to finish took me way too long. I, I wrote probably 300 pages when I sent it to my editor and really? he sent back like a hundred pages, you know, wow. so. Um, he edited out a lot and 
it, it, it was really hard for me to organize it. Um, I, I did it all wrong after reading a Ryan Holiday article on how to write a book, mm-hmm. but I'm very happy with what we polished uh, it into. Yeah. But it was just a real struggle to like, I know all this stuff that I want to say, what's the right way to say it? Yeah. Um, and then we came up with that formula of, you know, these kind of mental models that I use to be successful and figured out how they fit into certain parts of the day. And now, now that I think of it, it's a miracle how it actually <laughs> turned out as well it did, considering how much information I just wanted to spew at people. But um, again, with the help of a good editor, and we used uh, Tucker Max's company called yeah. Book in a Box, yeah. and an editor, their company, They're great, really, yeah. really worked out great and very happy with it. And so um, I think it was just, you know, me and Matt, we had a lot of dinners together and we just tossed a ton of ideas back and forth and he's very good at outlining things. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not exactly sure where the, where the name came from, but I remember August 29th, 2014, I know that I said to myself, this was a perfect day and Mm. it was just a regular day in the office, but it was one of those days where you're like, Mm. I made so much progress and so many good things happened today. Why can't every day be like this? Yeah. And actually it might've been 2013. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but that was when like perfect day kind of entered my mind. And then that must've came up in, in the titles that we were throwing around, uh, you know, like how to have a great day and all that sort of stuff. And so, uh, I think it's the right title. I think it's the right book, and it's helped people. And I, I know it's the right formula. It really, really did turn out well that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone wants that perfect day, and that perfect day that's not like out of the ordinary, but they can replicate each and every day. Um, you know, and so for you with the perfect day, there's a vision story. Yeah, the vision about my my future. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I teach everyone in the book to write their vision. And, you know, I learned about vision creation from guys like Cameron Harold, who wrote the book Double Double, yeah. and also this guy, Ari Weinswig, who owns Zuckerman's Deli in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's very famous. And they talk about writing a, a vision for your business. And I kind of modified it so it's your, your career, your family, everything. And your vision is really like writing a movie script for your future. Yeah. But your writing is it. You're writing your vision as if you already achieved everything that you want to achieve, and you write it three to five years in the future. And so I wrote mine, uh, you know, as if we were having a big party, and with, you know, my two kids were there, and and all my family and my friends, my business partners had flown up from America. I know exactly what house I want to live on and what street I want to live on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually looking at it. Uh, I live like a couple of streets down from it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know exactly what I want. I know exactly what Christmas party I want to have. And you write this vision story out, you know, your dream life as yeah. if you've already accomplished it. Right. And then you share that with good people. And when you share your vision with good people like I did about early to rise, other people go out of their way to help you. Yeah. It's almost like you you get them on this autopilot to help you. So if I tell you, hey, Jeremy, I'd, I, you know, what I really want to do is, you know, meet three entrepreneurs in the Chicago area that would, uh, that I could send this book to. And then you would do nothing but think of like, oh, who are these entrepreneurs that I could connect them with? Right. You know, even, even though there's no benefit to you, it's just that you're a good person and good people go into this autopilot of helping people. Yeah. So that's why people need to share their goals. And so one of my greatest success stories is a, with the Perfect Day Formula book is a pediatric anesthesiologist from California. And hmm. she wrote that when she shared her vision with her husband, it, it just completely strengthened their marriage. Really? And to hear that feedback is so rewarding because it validates my belief about the importance of a vision. So I encourage people just to do that section of the book and you know there's a bunch of questions in there that help people write the screenplay for the future life so that they can achieve exactly what they want and that's what it's all about is tell people what you want they'll go and help you and the next thing you know you have exactly what you want yeah i love that another interesting part of the book craig is rules right what are some of your rules some of my rules are that I get up and go to bed at the same time every day, yeah. and that's really, really helpful for maintaining all-day energy levels, so I highly recommend that to people. 
I also have rules of, that I don't swear, that I'm polite and courteous at all times, that I don't get in internet arguments with people. Uh, <laughs> if I've made a mistake, then I'll apologize. But other than that, I'm not going to, you know, if somebody mouths me off on my in the comments section, I'm not going to argue with them because, Engage, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just not worth it. Um, there's actually a really great quote from, uh, have, you ever, have you ever read any of uh, Nassim Talib's book, like uh, Fooled by Randomness and those books? No, I haven't. Okay, he has a little book of quotes called The Bed of Procrustes. Mm. And one of his quotes says, your reputation is harmed the most by what you say to defend it. Mm. And if you think about it, it's probably true. Because I love that. Then you, you just come up with these excuses and you should just, you know, if you mess up, just say sorry and fix it. Right. Don't try and pick up an excuse because you only dig the hole deeper. You make yourself sound terrible in one way or another. And, you know, all the words that you say can be twisted and turned against you. So don't even try and defend yourself. Um, it's just not worth it. And so I love that quote. It's really been uh, influential on me and just reminds me that, you know, somebody says something about you on the Internet, turn the Internet off go around and walk outside and realize no one's throwing stones at you. So in the real world, it doesn't matter. Right. And so I'm getting, so my rule is I don't get in confrontations. Um, even in the real world, if I, if I make a mistake, I apologize. Yeah. And if I didn't make the mistake and someone's wrong, I'm not going to argue with them about it. I'll just let them vent. And then, I'll, you know, maybe I'll say sorry and just, you know, leave it at that. But right. I'm not going to argue with somebody because it's yeah. just not worth my time. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Um, well, also I loved about the book is the not to do list. Yes, very important, especially in this crazy busy world of all the things that you could be doing. I mean, and you know, entrepreneurs that are listening, you can slip slide into working 16, 18 hours a day, especially with social media, uh, you know, reading every article that's out there on medium about how to build your business. I mean, there's just so much information that you have to have limits and cutoffs at some point, I mean, you just have to say, okay, this is the line and I'm stopping here. Yeah. And so whether it's, uh, you know, I'm, I don't work past eight o'clock at night or I, you know, I, I don't take work home or, right. you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, use the internet on Sundays, which is one of my rules. Yeah. What is um, on your not to do list? Uh, not to do list is not check email until after 11 o'clock in the morning or hopefully afternoon. Um, you know, not get in arguments, obviously, is another one. Uh, not uh, take phone calls from unexpected phone calls. So, you know, yeah. I don't just answer the phone. It yeah. starts ringing. Um, I don't take, you know, if someone tries to get a hold of me on Skype, unless we have an appointment, I don't take the call. Yeah. Um, I'm, in a, I'm in a fortunate position where I don't have to react to that stuff. Right. Um, people, if it's important, someone will get back to me later. Yeah. And, you know, it's just uh, unless there's a question mark in the email, I don't reply to it. Just, just stuff like that that helps you cut down on the amount of back and forth and unnecessary communication. And so yeah. I really just make sure that I, you know, if I'm having a phone conversation with somebody in two days, I'm not going to continue an email conversation that can wait for two days. Right. It's just stuff like that that can right. really save you a lot of time when yeah. it's all added up. Yeah, and I think in the book, I don't know if it was in the book or another piece of information you had out there was the three most important rules. Sorry, Jeremy, I didn't hear you. I said um, the three most important rules you talk about. Oh, so the three most important rules are going to be basically around your health, uh, I think around your sleep, and then your number one priority in life. So what's, figure out what your number one priority in life is and then wake up and spend 15 minutes of it on it every morning. So if we go back to like a get out of debt uh, problem, well, okay, if I get up and spend 15 minutes sitting down at my kitchen table figuring out how to get out of debt and I do nothing but that six days a week, I'm probably going to get into debt really quickly because I'm going to sit there and just think of like how can I cut back on my interest rate and how right. can I cut back on my expenses and how can I do all these things that are going to help me get out of debt. So figure out your number one priority and spend your first 15 minutes every day working on it. Yeah, love that. Um, you know, Craig, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask, uh, what's been the lowest moment and how you push through it? 
probably the lowest moment for me was in 2006, just before I hired my business coach, I started going through some anxiety attacks and they were very, very serious ones. Um, you know, so it was, you know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I would not be able to breathe. Uh, you know, I had tingling from the top of my head down to the end of my fingertips for six weeks every day, all day. Like it didn't stop. And I went to the hospital twice. I thought I was having heart attacks. Um, but I, you know, I just followed the, uh, steps in my book that I had not written yet, but I was learning at the time. Yeah. And I just tried everything. So I did standing meditation, which is called Qigong. Yeah. I tried uh, regular meditation. That's when I struggled with it. I tried yoga, um, you know, classical music. You know, and I, I actually needed to learn how to breathe again properly from my belly and not from my upper chest with yeah. short, shallow breaths because that actually messes up the uh, carbon dioxide in your blood and makes mm. you more anxious. Yeah. So all these things I was, you know, I was just living wrong at the time and I needed to fix myself and stop being a hypocrite and and I did and because I had a meaningful incentive to change which was to get rid of the anxiety. And yeah. so that was something I struggled with and it took about 6 to 12 weeks to do it, but I eventually did overcome it. Um and I can feel it coming back on at, at times really? when I'm stressed, but but I just you know slow down and breathe and it goes away. Um, you know, it's just like you can feel. It's almost like like a little bit of pressure right over your left pectoral. It, mm. For me, is where I feel it's like just right, right over in the there. heart, right where the heart. Yeah, is. yeah, and you're just like, what's going on here? And um, you know, it's some type of compression there. Yeah, and. If I feel that, I know that I need to step back, relax, do yeah. some breathing, and it'll go away. That's that's really scary. When you first had it the first few times, did you even know what it was? No, I, I didn't. And I'll tell you what, if you ever go into a packed emergency room and you want to get to the front of the line, just say you're having a heart attack. That <laughs> will uh, that will change the receptionist attitude towards you very, very quickly. And that's pretty much what you thought. You're like, I think I'm having a heart attack, and they just rushed you in. Yeah, I said that. To, I said that to the guy. I'm like, I think I, I'm having a heart attack right now. And he went from like, oh, this is another person wasting my time to like, okay, we're gonna take you right to the back right now. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Um, Craig, what's been one of the proudest moments for you? Uh proudest moment definitely getting this book out was huge. Yeah. Also. Um, you know, taking over to early rise was just really, really neat. Um, I know that we can help a lot of people with it. And so I'm very, very happy. And then every year when we do that toys for tots drive, when I get to announce how much money we've raised, because there's several contributions between all the shopping receipts and then money that other people have sent in. That's pretty fun. Uh, we actually have Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus there. Mm, cool. I have, all, you know, like a hundred people gathered around and We don't have like the Jerry Lewis telethon number come up, but you know, it's uh, written down on my paper and I get to announce it and the crowd goes nuts. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Talk about when the forming the kit, what made you decide to do not only just the perfect day formula book, but the kit and then what's in the kit. So the kit was actually Matt's idea. He came up with the brilliant idea of like, Hey, let's put together the tools that are in the book and give it to people. So it really walks them through it. So having the kit is like having me at your kitchen table across from it, you know, taking you through creating your rules, creating your pillars, creating your vision, walking you through all that. Plus, it gives you, you know, aspects for the brain dump, which is a really cool tool that helps separate work and home. Um, It allows you to identify your magic time, script your day, all these really important success tools that will help somebody accelerate the results. And so Matt gave me the idea our team put it together. It is really great. It's like having uh, presents show up at your house when you order it. It's like Christmas in July sort of thing. Right. And really, really happy with how it turned out. And so they, you know, they'll open it up and they'll get the gratitude journal that we have. That's also been a really big impact on my life for positive reasons. Yeah. And then they'll get the uh, workbook to help them create their rules. And then they'll have a little. Um, piece of paper that they get to write their rules down on in a plastic uh, carrying case for it. It's just like carrying around your goals at all times, like right. Zig Ziglar said. Yeah. So have that. And then there's a section on your um, transformation. Then there's a section on goal setting. So it's a poster that folds out and it's in a bit of an unconventional way of setting goals compared to normal. And then they have uh, 
how to create your vision with all the, the penetrating questions that I ask that help people identify what really matters to them. And then finally, uh, there's that scripting work pad sheet in there as well. So there's 100 days of scripting your day and using yeah. the brain dump. It's all those tools to help make sure that somebody has the greatest success that yeah. they get. And then there's the golden ticket, which you know, if somebody wants even more coaching, we have a online coaching program that helps people take it to the next level. Yeah, so what is the golden ticket? It yeah, so it gives to, them a huge yeah. discount. Yeah, a huge discount for them to call in to our customer support team. And if they want to get all the videos that I've created that go along with it, that are in, you know, walk people through even more questions, a, a life assessment that I've done that's been really helpful. Uh, how to get more done in their business. There's a business coaching section. There's some health related coaching sections. And then there's even one coaching session where I explain all the flaws in the formula and how to fix them. Mm. Because over time, I realized that the perfect day formula gives you a perfect day, but it's still not perfect. You know, some people can take some of the things a little too far, sometimes the wrong way. And so we fix all that just to make sure that everybody's dialed in and still mm -hmm. back on track. What's a flaw? or that you discovered? Uh, some people being too strict with their rules. So obviously with the rules, you need to follow them probably 90% of the time, but you don't want rules to get in the way of the two most important things in life, which are people and experiences. Mm. So if you say that you have a rule that, uh, you know, you don't do anything from Monday to Thursday and you just focus on work and this opportunity comes up for you to have dinner with a friend you haven't seen in 10 years, but you say, oh, no, I don't uh, you know, do social things on Tuesday evenings. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's taking things way too far. Um, one, you want to be focused by your rules, but you're not going to give up an opportunity to, you know, to really have a, a great memory with somebody. Now, of course, you have, to, you have to draw the line both ways. You can't be going out every night and staying up late and drinking socially every night if you want to have success in your health and wealth building. You just right. can't do that. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't be so strict that you give up on really great opportunities. So, I mean, most people are going to be wise enough to know what fits in that 90% yeah. boundaries and then the exceptional times that you go and make the exceptions for. Yeah, and you talk about it a little bit about your routine, like whatever, you go to bed at 8 or 8.30 and wake up at 4, but if you need to go out later, then you'll just kind of take a nap in the middle of the day and kind of get around that rule if it affects the yeah, experience. Yeah, it, it is really important to stick to your wake-up time yeah. as closely as you can. Yeah. Otherwise, then you get into like a three-day stretch where you're really tired in the morning and you're sleepy all afternoon. Yeah. Um, so it's better just to take the hit on the one day where you, know, you, you stay out a couple hours late or you miss a couple hours sleep you still get up very close to your wake-up time and you have a nap that day or you go to bed really early the next day and then you're right back on track. Yeah. But if you, know, you sleep in on Saturday and Sunday on the weekends like I used to, then it's you know not until Thursday morning when you feel like you've caught up, but then it's Thursday morning and you're back in the cycle of going out late again. Yeah. Craig, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. And um, I have one last question. But um, first, where should we point people towards? Where should they check out um, you know, the perfect day formula and the perfect day formula kit. We can get the uh, perfect day formula on Amazon in all its formats. You know, the audio book is really popular. Yeah. You, I got an audible. Do... Anyone, anyone should right. get it on audible. It's, it's like a steal for actually what the price is on audible. Yeah. It's really great. And then from there, if somebody does want to have, you know, that virtual coaching where it's like having me sitting at, across the table from them with the kit, they can go to perfectdayformula.com and actually watch a video where I unbox everything and mm -hmm. I walk people through in very much detail all the cool tools that they're going to get to succeed. Yeah, I mean, I would encourage anyone to obviously, you can go on Audible. I think it's like less than $10 for the Audible book. Um, and it's like three hours. It's so, yeah. I mean, what you can save in time, energy, money by listening to it, um, is remarkable. So thanks for creating that Craig. And so my last question is what should, what have we not talked about in the perfect day formula that we should, that we make sure that we mention? Oh, geez. Um, well, I think we've covered pretty much everything that really matters to me. We've covered, 
you know, helping people create the boundaries for their life, which is the rules in the morning, which allow them to get the most done. Mm -hmm. And actually, I guess the one thing that we haven't covered is the paradox that more structure in your life does actually lead to more freedom. Mm -hmm. So people think, wow, there's a lot of, you know, strict rules and stuff in this person's uh, approach to life. And there are. But again, if you think about it in terms of a normal day for a normal person, you know, they work during the day and then, you know, their family is waiting for them at home. Well, wouldn't you want to be very structured in your day so that you know that you can get on home, you can get home on time for dinner, you can get home on time to read for your kids before, before they go to bed, you can get home on time to actually pay attention to them and not your phone. And that's what it's all about. So that's why we do work so hard during the day and we do set up rules and we are very structured. And so the more structure you have in your life and you're in your days, the more freedom you have in your life so that you can go and do whatever you want at night. You can live wherever you want in the world when you're very successful because of the structure you have in your business. And you can do the things that you've always dreamed of doing because you get so much done. Yeah. And that's an objection you get. People tell you, well, you don't have kids, right? Yeah, I do get that. And then uh, and I just point to all the people that have been successful with the formula with kids. So, right, you know, right. One of my friends, Pedro Skoulian, not only does he get home on time for dinner, but he gets home on time after, you know, and he he has like one of the biggest growing fit, fitness franchises in, in America and he runs a, a big business, but he still gets home on time to play guitar with his son before dinner and then play games right. with him after dinner. And so yeah. he gets to shut down at night and not worry about work because he gets so much done during the day. Yeah, yeah. Everyone check out the perfectdayformula.com or is it perfect day formula without the T-H-E? I think we have both, but perfectdayformula.com for sure. Check it out. Craig, thank you so much. It's been fantastic. Thank you, Jerry. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. Like a beach if you find the sand And right now I feel like a hundred grand